Let's go to Douglas Oltsikin, the former Congressional Budget Office Director, American Action Forum President. Um, it, it seemed like John Boehner, the former speaker, now with a book out, it seems it's unlikely uh, this is even going to come to pass. Uh, but again, the president along party lines did get his COVID relief bill through. Do you think as things stand now, it's going to be tougher to sell infrastructure? I think it is going to be tougher to sell this bill. Um, the, the previous bill was... Uh, essentially, the HEROES Act from the previous Congress that the Democrats had worked on for quite some time, they were familiar with it, they'd already voted on it. It was straightforward to get Democrats together to, to vote it across on a party line vote. This is a very different animal. Uh, it's, quote, infrastructure, and that means a different thing to every member of Congress. And they want, they want their thing in there, and they want to make sure their constituents get taken care of, and there's no real coalescing it around a single bill. There's a lot of constituencies unhappy with the president's proposal. They want to, you know, change the salt cap on taxes or change the way the money gets spent in, in Medicare. And, you know, those are differences that Democrats have to iron out. That takes time. It takes a, a lot of leadership. And it makes this bill harder than the previous one. Yeah, I think we're up to, what, you know, a dozen and a half uh, largely Democratic congressmen who are no votes on this unless they change the salt thing. Right. How likely is that? Uh, that seems unlikely to me. Uh, there are um, yeah. a, a lot of people who think it would be a, a bad move to do something that essentially is a, a tax break for affluent Americans, right? That's at odds with everything they're saying everywhere else. So they really are stuck uh, with a lot of uh, internal conflict, and it's a very different uh, uh, moment than we, what we saw with the $1.9 trillion rescue plan. You know, um, and you crunch these numbers far better than I, uh, Doug, but uh, even with the, the hike in corporate taxes and investment taxes and taxes on the, on the wealthy, it wasn't even close to paying for all of this. So what's to stop the president to say, all right, if I can get Joe Manchin on board and, and, and reduce the tax hike from 28 percent and bring it to 25 percent, fine. I don't have to scour around and look for another way to make up for that dough. Um, where do you see this going? Uh, I think that's the most likely scenario. Uh, they do have some problems with the, the moderate Democrats on the tax policy. It's not good tax policy. Uh, they know that. It runs the risk of losing headquarter companies and getting us out of line with our developed uh, country competitors. And that's, that's a big economic issue. But there's been no reticence on the part of the White House of just borrowing a lot of money. And so when push comes to shove, they want to do the spending. Uh, they're unlikely to compromise on the spending. They're more likely to just say, uh, not as much in the way of tax, let's go borrow the money. That, that's a big issue going forward, because we came into the pandemic with a big structural deficit in the federal uh, budget. Uh, we're going to exit with an even bigger one if they go down this road. And, and that just means hard work for some future Congress. Yeah, to put it mildly, Doug, always good seeing you, my friend. Thank you for sorting this out for the time being, or at least making sense of it.